Hey everybody, it's Daryl back again. It's been a long time. I know I appreciate the ones that have reached out and said, hey, fish man, where you been at? Working. And all that good stuff. Trying to get back to where I was about six, seven years ago, but it's tough. It has really been tough. Uh, but one foot in front of the other and do the best we can, right? So this video, we're gonna do a little farm update. There's our cows, we're in the back pasture over here at the barn. This is the last pasture I did, probably gonna be the last one I do for a while. Uh, unless things change, we're probably gonna downscale just a little bit. But we bought a square baler and a rake. And my father-in-law is supposed to be buying a cutter uh, so we can start baling hay. Trying to get to the point where we don't have to buy any hay. A lot of the hay that you buy around here has had hog crap pumped on it because at one time, Sampson County in North Carolina was the largest hog producing county in, in the world. Uh, not so much now because they've expanded out, but uh, a lot of the hay fields are pumped with hog crap and we're trying to get it where we got minimal stuff sprayed on it and trying to be a little more self-sufficient. Uh, that's the main reason why I expanded this one out here, but I'm gonna do a couple of little update videos Show you a little update on the hogs, uh, the rabbits. We got rabbits. I think we've got probably 15 or 20 rabbits now. Uh, we got a, a baby donkey that's been born. I think she's maybe two weeks old now. And I think that's about it. But I'm going to show you my rabbit tractor, our chicken tractors. We got our last round of rollers or meat birds out on pasture now. It's around 50 of those. And that's pretty much about it. We did bail some hay over at my in-law's house. We got close to 300 bales. I stacked it under the cow barn over there. And I think every bell of it has tried to fall. I don't know why. When we first started bailing with the, the baler, it's a number nine Massey Ferguson. I'll uh, throw up a link for some, a video of the actual uh, baler itself. So you can see what it looks like, but it is old. That thing's older than I am, and I'm 47 years old. But uh, I think I bought it in the rate for two grand or something like that. When you broke, <laughs> you had to buy old stuff. We had to end up sending it to the Massey Ferguson place, and they worked on it and tweaked it and got the, the knotters working on it. And for it to be as old as it is, it did really good. We had to tighten the bells up after we bailed for a little bit to get it where the bells are good and tight. So I think once we tighten it up, those bells are probably 50 or 60 pounds. I've, I've tightened it up pretty good. So, but let's go uh, show you some stuff. So these are our meat birds with our chicken or with a few turkeys in there. But we move them every day, at least once, especially when they get bigger, they need to be moved more than once. Now we just got the regular waters on it. They get to eat fresh grass and eat bugs. And we got two turkeys in here too. Back here in the back. We hatched those out from a bourbon red uh, hen and tom that we got. These these are our meat birds and they're wanting to get out to get the... Uh... We got a lot of uh, grasshoppers and crickets and all that other stuff out here in the pasture and that's what they're trying to get a hold of but we're running we run two sometimes three depending upon how many birds we got here's some of our other chickens now that's normal to see one that's almost bald that's the cornish cross thing and then we got three turkeys back there in the back these are meat birds these are commercial meat birds we did freedom rangers one time they're red looking chicken they almost kind of look like a What's the name of them birds? Rhode Island Reds, kind of. But uh, they're more of a, a heritage breed, closer to, but not really. Uh, the difference between the Freedom Rangers and the Cornish Cross is the Freedom Rangers, the breasts are a little smaller and the thighs are bigger. But the Cornish Cross are bigger, breasted. They still got decent thighs on them, but you can take a chick that's two days old and in eight weeks, 
it'll be anywhere between six and eight pounds. Freedom Rangers take a little bit longer to uh, get to that size. Some people like the Freedom Rangers. We're more of a Cornish cross crowd over here. But uh, I was gonna show you our rabbit tractor too. So this is a rabbit tractor that I built. It's made out of two by twos, one by fours, and one by ones. And uh, it's got chicken wire around the outside. This tin is actually real tin. It's not the metal sheeting like you can get uh, at Lowe's and Home Depot and some of these other places. The sun can shine on that and you can sit down on it and it's not hot. That's the advantage of that. These, this uh, tin actually come off of some hog houses we had when I was growing up. When I was, uh, let's see, from elementary all the way up through high school, we had uh, hog houses. We had a farrow to finish. I think there was 3,000 of our own hogs. Uh, we had anything from the piglets on up to the, the uh, boars in the south. We had a breeding barn, two topping houses, farrowing houses, the uh, nurseries and all that other stuff. But uh, that's where that tin come from. It's actually a four foot tin. But uh, I took part of that down. Matter of fact, the barn over here that we built, the cow shelter slash barn, uh, that's where the trusses for it came from. I took down part of a top of the house. But uh, let me show you what the chicken tractor, what a rabbit tractor looks like. Arrow to finish, I think there was 3,000 of our own hogs. Uh, we had anything from the piglets on up to the, the uh, boars in the south. We had a breeding barn, two topping houses, farrowing houses, the uh, nurseries and all that other stuff. But uh, that's where that tin come from. It's actually a four foot tin. But uh, I took part of that down. Matter of fact, the barn over here that we built, the cow shelter slash barn, uh, that's where the trusses for it came from. I took down part of a top of the house. But uh, let me show you what the chicken tractor, what a rabbit tractor looks like. So here's our rabbits. Some of these are full-blooded Rex rabbits, and then the other ones are a uh, turnic. They're uh, a breed of rabbit from Texas that are supposed to be a little bit more heat tolerant. But the way I got it is uh, the back of it's surrounded by tin, and uh, the front of it's open. Matter of fact, I need to move it. And then we hang waters on it. I got some stuff ordered to... Uh, Put some automatic waters on here that runs off of a five gallon bucket. But here's the way I did the floor and the stuff in it. I've got the, uh, that's the half inch by half inch wire on the bottom. And the reason why I did that was to give the rabbit somewhere to get up off the ground in case we had a real heavy rain or something like that. And then we got it out here where they can eat the grass. Around the outside edges, I got this is a uh, paneling for like a uh, what I put up for the woven wire fences and stuff. I just cut the bottom part out of it and made a, a space all the way around it. The reason why you do that is if you don't do something like that, they'll have a more tendency to uh, dig their way out. If you leave rabbits in a place long enough, they will eventually dig out. But uh, that's our rabbit tractor. I'll do a video of me moving it right quick. You would think with that uh, wire flooring in it, it'd be hard to move, but it's actually really simple to move. So when I move this rabbit tractor, I always leave the top open. That way I can see where the rabbits are doing. That way we don't hurt the rabbit. Come on. And all I do it up real slow. Just where the green catches up with the uh, back part of the uh, of the actual back piece of the chicken tractor or the rabbit tractor itself. As you can see, the, the rabbit saw them. I could come out and go to eating on it. So. I think that's a pretty cool design as far as a rabbit tractor goes. It gives them room to eat the pretty green grass and it also gives them a place. Say if a predator or something comes up to the thing, they can all run in the back back there and uh, get away from the 
the uh, outside edges of the stuff and be less likely for them to try to tear into it and tear it up. But all I got, I got three hinges across the, the back, you know, one on each end and one in the middle. And then I got a clasp right there that when I close it, I hook it. That way the wind can't blow the top up on it. And here are some of our pigs that we've got. They're all ground raised pigs and they got plenty of room to free range. It's probably in this little paddock right here. Maybe an acre and a half or so. And we got some babies way over there. Sound like they might be hungry, but these are Duroc cross hogs that we raise on the ground. Now, when I first put the hogs out here, this whole place was covered all this was covered in English ivy and the hogs has worked it over and cleaned it up real good. But that's that woven wire fence. The bottom part's what I used on the uh, rabbit tractor. So and that's what our hogs look like. These over here is the next ones that are going to get processed in November. So over here is where we keep Miss Scarlet for now. And the reason why is she had a baby the other day. I don't know if you can see him or not or see her. But there she is. What are you doing, Feedy? She's got to grow into her ears. Well, we got her over here so she can be out in the uh, shade a little bit. Here's part of our flock of chickens, geese. There's two ducks out here, and of course, a few of our turkeys. I think Hope calls her Bonnie. Not sure where she came up with that name. I know she's got a reason for it, but that's what the, the little donkey's name is, is uh, Bonnie. Can you tell them, hey, Miss Scarlet? But Miss Scarlet, she's a, a mule we got, or a donkey we got from a little not too far from here. He locked his back. So that was the update on the farm. I shot that video probably a week or so ago, uh, and I forgot to do a closing on it. Everybody's doing good. The rabbits are doing good. We were raising those rabbits as a different form of uh, meat. Yes, those rabbits will be processed. Uh, Hope says she's not going to eat them. I'll have to surprise her one day with uh, uh, some of it. She says she'll try it as long as she doesn't know what it is. Uh, a lot of people have problems with people eating stuff that it's not the norm, but in other places, you know, eating rabbits is a thing. Uh, it's supposed to be leaner than beef or pork. It's supposed to be right in there with chicken. So we're going to try it out. If it don't work out, we'll sell what we got and... Uh, we can use that as a, like a mobile brooder or something. But uh, it's just something we're trying out. So hope y'all enjoyed the farm tour. Probably the next video coming out will be the one that's gonna be for the giveaway for the uh, string trimmer. If y'all haven't seen that, it's the video before that. And I will try to remember to put it somewhere in the closing. Uh, I think that's it. We're finally getting into October. I think today's the 28th of September. I'm ready for it to cool off. I'm ready for frost so I can get in the woods there behind the barn and finish my pasture over running my high tensile wire. That place is wrapped up in poison ivy and me and poison ivy do not get along. So that's an update on the farm. We appreciate y'all if y'all stayed this far. We love y'all, we appreciate y'all, and we'll see you on the next one.